I'm Sam, and this is Amazing Travels. What to do in Berkeley, California? Well, I've got some tips and tricks. Grizzly Peak is totally free, and it has an amazing view of Napa, the Golden Gate Bridge, Alcatraz, San Francisco, the Bay Bridge, you have Oakland in the foreground, and you can see Silicon Valley. Parking is available right in the front. There is a bench out there made of a nice old wooden trunk. Take a drive up the hill for some breathtaking views. Another awesome place to visit while in Berkeley is Tilden Park. It has great hiking trails, a bunch of greenery, little creeks that you walk by. You can even walk through them if you want. Also, there are bridges for those of you that don't want to step into the water. And then, all of a sudden, the trail will lead you to Lake Anza, which is perfect for summertime to get out of that California heat. You can either find your own little cove for swimming, which will be like right off the trails, or there's a Lake Anza Beach, which you can pay to get into. For adults 16 plus, it's just $350 to get in. For children, it's $250. And if you're old, 62 or over, just $250. Sorry, I didn't mean to call you old, but hey, when you get a discount, who cares, right? <laughs> Next place I recommend to go is the Claremont Canyon Regional Preserve. There is two hour street parking, which is more than enough time to make it up. As soon as you walk into the preserve, there are maps at the entryway. Pick one up. You'll be following the Stonewall Panoramic Trail. It's very flat, but extremely steep. The first plateau is an awesome view, but do not quit. Keep going up that steep hill, because once you get to the top, you have a panoramic view of Oakland, Berkeley, San Francisco, the Golden Gate. I mean, this view is even wider angled than Grizzly Peak. Take some photos up there and rest up at that bench because you earned it after that hill, let me tell you. If you're unaware, Berkeley is known for hippies and very liberal movements, and all of that is really showcased on Telegraph Ave. When in the area, I definitely recommend taking a walk down Telegraph Avenue. You can find street vendors, street art, a bunch of restaurants, and it basically walks you straight into UC Berkeley. Before you walk on campus though, you've got to visit Cream. Cream is an ice cream sandwich place, but it's not any ice cream sandwich place. You choose your cookie, you choose your ice cream, you choose your toppings. They give you this fresh baked oven warm cookie with ice cream in the middle that is ice cold. It's hot and fresh and cold. Absolutely phenomenal. After you've walked down Telegraph Ave, Walk onto the UC Berkeley campus. It is really pretty. Do not leave without going up the Campanile. The Campanile stands at over 300 feet tall and it is the third largest bell and clock tower in the world. As you walk up the steps to go in there, turn around and you'll see an awesome view of the Golden Gate Bridge. Then get your butt to the admission, up the elevator, and you have gorgeous views. The bells are played daily at noon and 6 p.m. except for Sundays when they're played at 2 p.m. Like I said, you get an awesome view of the Bay Area and it's only three bucks for adults and two bucks for kids. If you're a beer drinker, like me, hit up Fieldwork Brewery. Apparently they don't filter their beer like most people do, so it has a really full flavor. They have everything from dessert beers to IPAs, just a very wide selection and you could sit inside in the tap room or outside because California's weather is pretty sweet. Once you're done drinking those brewskis, head over to Golden Gate Fields, at least in front of it, and there is a beautiful place to watch the sunset. It's overlooking the ocean, you could hear the waves crashing, and the sun sets behind some mountains, which is pretty epic. Last thing I'm gonna tell you about, the Muir Woods National Monument has a concentration of California redwoods, which are trees that soar over 300 feet high. They are so wide, you can sometimes drive your car through them. This is a day trip, because it's gonna take you a while to hike. I'll tell you right off the bat, parking is a disaster. They have two parking lots. Both of them were stacked to the brim. Just keep driving down Muir Woods Road and you're gonna find some patches of grass where a bunch of other people are parked. Park there. We were the last ones parked like pretty far down the hill and it was about a two mile hike to the entrance. Once you're at the entrance, get a map. Now here's the insider. It's 10 bucks to get into the Muir Woods National Monument. But if you're ready to hike and you've got your hiking boots on, do not pay that $10 fee. Why? Because you can start the hike at the parking lot. I'm not just trying to rob the state of California of some money, but the truth is, when you pay the entrance fee and go into the monument, it's so full of tourists that like, 
you don't really get to enjoy the redwoods. This is what you do. There's a parking lot right in front of the entrance. Since you came from parking way far away, turn back around after you have the map, and not from that first parking lot where the restrooms are, but the second parking lot, there's an entrance to the trails. From this one, you're gonna follow what says to the Ben Johnson Trail. That means you are currently on the Dipsy Trail. You take the Dipsy Trail all the way to the Ben Johnson Trail, and you follow that loop right back around to the front entrance. The hike takes about two hours, going at a very comfortable pace, and not only do you get to see beautiful ocean views, you also get to be alone with the redwoods. These trees shoot up so high. It is absolutely gorgeous. You get to enjoy the serenity of the woods without having to be in the craziness of the tourists at the front entrance gate. So make sure you pack sandwiches, snacks, definitely some water, and it, go enjoy the trail. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel, It's Amazing Travels. Click here if you want to see my adventures when I was living in Germany slash Europe. Also, if you want to learn how to cook Cuban, I know a little random, but I am Cuban and my abuela and I love to cook. So click here for some authentic Cuban recipes. I mean, why not? Impress your friends, people. Bye.